I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? I remember to unmute this time. Peace, family. Um, this is, uh, thank you guys for tuning in to yet another edition of Happy Talks. We have um, Anthony Browder with us tonight. It's going to be exciting as, you know, as usual. Before we get started, we're just going to, um, you know, just go over a couple of things. Number one, if you have not signed up for the Happy Newsletter, I need for you to go to happyfilm.com right now and to sign up for the newsletter. Now, it's important that you sign up for this because as, um, as you know, uh, culturally, as a community, we need to make sure that we are in charge of how our information is disseminated. And uh, the Happy Newsletter, newsletter is one way that you can get some, um, some information that, is, that will do the body good. So in this newsletter, we have five different articles that we write out every month. We talk about um, some health, uh, like a health article. We talk about a financial innovator someone in the past who has laid our foundation for where we are right now. We also um, showcase a black business. Usually it's a couple black businesses. Um, and we also will do a, a happy update. And then we um, we talk about, um, oh, I can't believe I forgot. Let me see, there's the health economic uh, innovator, the support to black business, the, um, the happy, I'm sorry, the financial 101 news, that's the other piece. We always give some like financial 101 news. So those five articles are in this newsletter every single month. And so it's important for you to sign up. You just go to happyfilm.com. Go ahead, just hit the button. Um, and it says, you know, get connected and you can get signed up for the newsletter. Also, while you're there, you can get, you can, if you are in any of the areas that we're going to do our Happy City Tour in, you can buy tickets there, but you can also get, um, some um, merchandise. We have all, we have some beautiful things there. You can get a copy of Hoppy or you can digitally download it. You can um, get, you know, pick up a t-shirt. We have happy posters, some happy um, water bottles, all types of stuff. So visit our store. It's a way of supporting and keeping black dollars within our community. So please go to happyfilm.com and, um, and make sure you sign up for the newsletter and support. Also, I just want to just give a little quick shout out. I see that um, our crew is in the house already. Um, a shout out to Brian and Olivia, Sharon and DM. He was DM and Rashamella are always the first people waiting, <laughs> waiting patiently for the happy talks to get started. So um, uh, peace to you guys for definitely, um, you know, supporting Nazia and our girl Becky Brown from Detroit. Um, so peace and love and um, happiness to all you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. So our happy city tour, we've already been to Detroit and we've been to Philly. Next, this Sunday, we will be in Washington, DC. And this is gonna be, this is gonna be one of our, um, our monumental uh, screenings because we have Anthony Browder, who is, uh, usually we have like a panel discussion afterwards. Nope, no panel discussion. We are going to just have Anthony Browder talk about why Nile Valley civil, civilization is important to people of African ancestry. And so this is going to be hands down one of the um, best screenings that we've had thus far. Uh, he is laying the foundation for us to learn why knowing about the Nile Valley is important. And so Anthony Browder will be in the house. This is an in-person um, event. You can go to happyfilm.com and let me just put that up there so that everybody uh, can make sure they get up on there and um, check us out. You can go to Happy Film right there because you can also get DVDs, you can get everything. But right there is where you can get your ticket to, um, you know, to check out uh, Anthony this uh, Sunday. Doors open up at 730 and we will promptly be getting started at 8 o'clock. 
not 8 or 1, 8 o'clock. So please make sure. And I'm also putting the link for the tickets. If you haven't gotten your tickets, you want to make sure you do that. Because if this sells out and you just came to the door, you may not be able to see you. And then you're going to be mad. So just get your tickets now. The, right there. The link is there. Make sure you, you guys, um, you know, go ahead and support. After uh, D.C. on Sunday, the following Saturday, we're going to be in Atlanta. And Atlanta is cool because not only are, do we have um, Dr. Chika Akua, who will be hosting the event, um, we have Taki on the, the panel, Shar Bates from Alter um, Candy. We have Dr. Alicia Boykins, um, excuse me, Dr. Alicia Watkins. I'm, I'm mixing up her husband's first name and last name, but Dr. Alicia uh, Watkins. And uh, we will have a special presentation by Dr. David Anderson. And we also have Blue Pill on the, the panel. So it's going to be exciting in, in Atlanta. Please make sure that you guys, uh, you, again, you go to happyfilm.com and get your tickets. The event starts at 630 and we will be at the River Riverside Epicenter. Then we will have Connecticut the following week and we will be in Houston, Texas in January, January 9th. And there it's going to be cool because we have um, Asar Imhotep and Dr. Wade Nobles that will be um, in the house and on the panel. So please support the Happy City Tour. Get your tickets. But if you are not around any of those cities, it's okay. You can go to, see, everything is at happyfilm.com. You go to happyfilm.com and you can actually get a DVD copy or you can live stream, um, not, not live stream, you can download a digital download of, of the movie Hoppy. So um, let me remove this. Um, the other piece is we need for you to like and share this video, okay? This is very important. It's good that we're listening to this, but it's even more important that we spread the, the knowledge and the wealth to everyone else. So please make sure you are liking this video, comment, okay, and share it to at least three people. Everybody know three people that you can just forward this live to. It's really important because um, Mr. Browder is going to drop some gems, as he always does. And we need everybody to be in the house to hear it so that um, we can move forward as a people. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and bring in um, Mr. Browder. How are hey. you doing? Good evening, Felicia. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Now that we're here with our resident e Egyptologist, historian, archaeologist, all of that. All that goodness. Um, so, Mr. Browder, we have lots of things we're going to talk about tonight. Um, and one of the things I know that when I first put out the meme, I was like, oh, we're going to talk about, uh, but we are, you, well, you are going to talk about why now Valley civilization is important um, to people of an African ancestry. But this is not the lecture. This is like a preview, like a little, like, mm -hmm. click notes, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So I just want to make sure everybody understands that. We don't get any emails. So, um, but before we get started, I know you have some exciting news about what's going on in, in Egypt. So we can start there. Oh, uh, gosh, there's so much going on. Um, where can I begin? Let me... <laughs> <laughs> because, well, first you got to tell everybody, well, you're going to have a more comprehensive um, presentation on Wednesday. Okay, we're well, good. Yeah, that's a good place to start. So typically, every September, I do an update on the Ace of Restoration Project, uh, the success of this that particular season's work at the site. And what we've been doing the last several years, uh, we've been ending our season after September. So what that does is limit the things that I could talk about during my annual report to the community, because certain things I can't discuss with the general public. Uh, until our report, our final report has been submitted to the um, uh, Antiquities Department. So our report was submitted uh, on the 11th of uh, November. And so I had planned to do our follow up report on the Ace of Restoration Project on Wednesday, December the 3rd. So this coming Wednesday, at seven o'clock, I'll do the update, but I can I can give everyone who's listening now some highlights of what we'll be talking about. Uh, one of the most significant highlights is that we found 15 new tombs this season. So the 15 new tombs have been added to the 
already five tunes that we've discovered since uh, 2006 when the project officially began with my colleague Alina Pistakova. So that gives us, ah, oh, you see my cat in the background? Hey, you know, wait, hey, who's that speaking up back here? <laughs> yeah, she likes to come and, uh, and listen to me uh, talk as well. She learns as much as I do. Yeah, she's like, she's trying to find out what's going on. Okay, exactly. I like that. Um, and so we we now have a total of 20 tombs at our site. Wow. And uh, the 20 tombs, the, the, the 15 new tombs were built around the perimeter of our three primary tombs. And those three primary tombs were constructed as temple tombs. Now, this concept of a temple tomb is, is quite unique in that you know, we know that temples were places where people would come and priests would come to um, interact with the natural, to, to pour libations, to call their spirits down, to possess them, to guide them, to inspire them and, and do their sacred work. And a tomb is a place where somebody was buried and that was the end of their lives. But a temple tomb is a place where the priests of the priests, in this instance, the priests of Amun, who are buried at the site, uh, are buried and their colleagues can come to that site to engage in rituals, to petition uh, the spirit of that particular ancestor or any other ancestor that they call on to come forth to them so that they can access their knowledge and interact with them. So these, the discovery of these temple tombs is profound because, you know, it's these are the first Kushite tombs built in uh, in Luxor on the west bank of Luxor, and they show the role that Kushites played during the 25th dynasty when they came into Kemet to restore the land of their ancestors. So our presence at this site for the past 13 years now with the Asa Restoration Project has allowed us to literally rewrite the history of the 25th dynasty, which has been marginalized in Egyptian history and presented as the Negro dynasty. So if the 25th dynasty is the Negro dynasty, then that suggests that the other um, 29 dynasties in Egypt were non-Negro or non-African. And that's, you know, that's, that's a lie. And, yeah. and so it's important for us to be able to put this information into historical context so that people can understand one, the significance of the 25th dynasty and two, what the 25th dynasty did to restore the historical and cultural memory of Kemet, which they referred to as the land of their ancestors. So it's about removing the historical and cultural blinders so that we can see who we are and what our ancestors have done so that we can replicate that uh, they're, they're doing in our own lifetime. And that's what the process is about. And so it also speaks to the theme for my discussion on Sunday, you know, why Kemet matters or why Kemet should matter to people of African ancestry, because everybody is excavating in, in Egypt. We're the only people of African ancestry who are funding an archaeological excavation in Egypt. The French are there, the Germans are there, the Polish are there, the Russians wow. are there, the Lithuanians are there. Everybody's there and only us. So I'm interested now after 13 years of working at this site, I'm interested now in helping to create a pipeline so that we can train those people who will come behind us and we will have permanent, a permanent spot and or permanent spots throughout Egypt. So in order for us to do this, we've got to be serious about the history and culture and train future generations uh, of our family members so that they understand that there is a place for them in the Nile Valley to help restore the history and culture of their ancestors. So, you know what, um, Mr. Brown, I had a question um, that I wanted to know when you were, because you were explaining the difference between a tomb and a temple tomb. Mm -hmm. So when, what, um, like what visually is different? Like, how did you know when you came across you're like, oh, this is a temple tomb. Like, how did you know that? Okay, that's a good question because when we first started uh, excavating in Karakamin's tomb, for example, we excavated in the first pillared hall, then the second pillared hall where we found the burial chamber. And then we started excavating toward the east, toward the entrance to the tomb. And we found um, the open air sun court. 
-hmm. which is in, you know, in a, a, an anomaly of sorts in a tomb. Why would you have a sun court in a tomb? Then we found the steps leading to um, the actual sun court in the tomb itself. But then as we were excavating on the ground level, we found the footprint of a pylon. Now a pylon, pylons are built in front of tombs. And we found um, three pylons built at three different locations in uh, above Karakamen's tomb. A pylon uh, in front of the staircase that led down to the sun court, a pylon behind the sun court, which leads to the underground portion of Karakamen's tomb, and a third pylon uh, in that region that separates the first pillar hall from the second pillar hall where his burial chamber is. So when you go to, let's say, for example, you go to our Karnak temple or Luxor temple in Egypt, the exterior of that temple is a pylon, two large um, stone entranceways that are connected by a doorway. And that shape of a pylon is a unique shape. It's, it angles up. It's a unique shape that that represents um, ah a ket the name of the company a ket tours yes is the the horizon the place where the sun rises and sets so symbolically metaphorically what you see with the pylon the pylon to the left represents the space where the sun rises kepre the pylon pylon to the right represents the space where the sun sets in the west amen. And the space in the center is the doorway or the entranceway to the temple or the temple tomb. And above the doorway, you typically had this symbol uh, of a winged sun disc, which we know as a Heru Bidet. And that represents the present moment. That Bidet also represents Ray or the sun on high, the midpoint of your journey. So the pylon on, uh, on one level is a metaphor for your life. You begin on the left when you're born as Kepra. You come into the world. Um, you reach your greatest potential in um, the, the, the middle portion of your life, uh, between your 20s and your 50s, if you will, where you do your best work. And then uh, the pylon to the left represents the descent of uh, your life and you're moving closer to ancestorhood. So it's profoundly important that this structure of a pylon would be erected at these tombs because it ensured that these people were not to be buried and forgotten. These people, uh, these ancestors were to be accessed by priests who had training, who knew how to call them forward, uh, who knew how to petition them so that their souls could inspire the living and help them process through the world more efficiently. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just, this is just amazing because, you know, and I had a chance to go there and I was just, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't think um, people understand, like, you know, I, I, I didn't really think about when you were saying, oh, restoration. But no, restoration means that you have lots of millions of little pieces of things that you're literally putting back together. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, like it's, yeah, but that's amazing. So, um, so family, I've put the, the link so that you can be able, because um, uh, Mr. Browder is gonna show pictures on Wednesday, he has a whole Zoom presentation. The link is in the chat. You can click onto it and sign up so that you can see, you know, um, you know, just witnesses. This is this is well, what's actually, they have to register uh, any at Eventbrite and registration is free in order to receive the link to watch the presentation on Wednesday. Okay. At 7 mm -hmm. OK, yeah. That, and that's what I um, that's what I put in. Yeah, yes. that's the link you sent me. OK, mm -hmm. so that link is in the um, in the chat, everyone. So make sure you um, you definitely uh, support right there. And I know um, someone was uh they, they referenced your um your not-for-profit they said heal your uh restoration project and i'm going to put that information if you want to contribute i know that we had everyone we had uh giving tuesday this past week um and uh 
you know, if you didn't give Tuesday, you could actually give Friday. <laughs> you can actually yeah. give any. Well, actually, my position is you should be given every day. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we we are here. We are here to create and to improve the quality of the of life of the people that we interact with. And that j just doesn't happen on one day, just as we should not give thanks for the people who are in our lives on one day. So it's a matter of realizing that every day is an opportunity to show your appreciation to people who matter to you. And, and so we don't do Giving Tuesday. We do give when you feel compelled to give. Uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, on January, February, March, you know, every month Absolutely. throughout the year, you know, as much as you can, because the more um, financial assistance we receive, the more we're able to do at the site. Everything costs money. You know, we yeah, live yeah. in America and we live in a capitalistic society and everything costs money. And um, you have to have money to play the game. Uh, we've been, you know, quite blessed in Egypt in that we've, we've done, we've stretched our dollars. We do incredible things with the with the money that we have and uh, the Egyptian government is, is truly has truly come to acknowledge uh, the quality of the work that we've done. And I'll get into that more on on Wednesday. I don't want to give all my goodies away. Yeah, can't give all the goodies away. You guys have to sign up for this um, for uh, for his event. But right there, that's where you can um, donate uh, money to um, to help you know, a, a help bring history to life. And this is the thing, you know, everybody, everybody can't do everything, right? But everyone needs to do something. Mm -hmm. I remember Dr. Renoko Rashidi would say that all the time. I'm mm -hmm. pretty, and, I, and I think I, I hear, actually I hear quite a few people say it, but I remember him saying it quite often, um, you know, is that we don't have to do everything, but everyone needs to do something. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you can't get to Egypt and, and help, you know, Mr. Browder manually, you know, uh, re restore, these um, temple tombs and tombs, then right here, ikg-info.com and make it happen. Yep. And awesome. the beautiful thing about that, Felicia, is that um, we have a nonprofit, a 501c3. Mm -hmm. So all of your contributions are tax deductible. Yes. You write them off. And, and also, uh, we are registered with Amazon Smile as a contributing um, organization. So if you're buying anything via Amazon this year, next year, whenever, then I urge you all to uh, sign up with Amazon Smile. And if you go into Amazon Smile, they have a list of um, accepted uh, nonprofit organizations and IKGCC is registered as a, um, as a 501c3 on Amazon uh, Smile. So what that means is, 1% of everything you buy on Amazon is donated by Jeff Bezos, the wealthiest man on the planet, to IKGCC. So, you know, we live in a capitalistic society, so let's use our capital to accomplish things that will benefit us in the long term. And this is one very easy way. Uh, as you spend money, you can also save money and yeah. help us do this work. Yeah. And, you know, once you sign up for it, then you don't have to do it every time you make a purchase. Exactly. You know, um, I, I as soon as you, and you can actually sign up, the, the way that you do it is right on uh, Mr. Browder's website. He walks you right through it. Sign up. Um, and the beautiful thing about it, if you just think about it, just people listening and you think about how many times those brown boxes are coming to your house. Absolutely. <laughs> Mine from all days, different times, early, late. And, you know, every time you buy something, you can literally be rebuilding a whole tomb. <laughs> like that is, mm -hmm. it's awesome. So if, and everyone, if there's nobody on this call that does not um, shop at Amazon. Sure, so sure, make sure. sure, you know, that's the easiest thing that we can do. Um, and, and so Felicia, uh, let me, let me just amplify one thing you said. Um, you mentioned just a minute ago that every time someone purchases something, they can help us restore a tomb. We're not restoring a tomb. We're restoring an entire city oh. of the ancestors. Oh. You know, yeah. we got, we've got, we've got 20 tombs thus far. And yeah. I know that we're, we've been walking over at least another 20 tombs. Oh my so God. we have a village of ancestors that we are slowly but surely uncovering and giving life to. 
And as we give life to these ancestors, as we find uh, the names that were carved uh, in their in their tombs, what we're now able to do is speak their names now. And as a result of speaking their names, we're making it possible for them to live again. So just, just imagine now, put ourselves in the position of, of our ancestors 2,700 years ago when these tombs were first built. The whole purpose of creating these temple tombs was to ensure that the living would be able to pour libations and speak the names of these ancestors so that these ancestors would continue to have bodies through which they could inspire and work through. But with the fall of Kemet, these tombs fell into disrepair. They were robbed by members of the 26th dynasty. They were robbed by the Greeks and the Romans and the Coptics and the Arabs. So no one has been tending to the needs of these ancestors. And now we've come along oh and God. we're excavating their tombs. We're restoring their tombs and they can now live again. So everyone who participates in the Ace of Restoration Project is giving life to these ancestors. And so the important thing to realize is that the ancestors are here to open the way for us and to make our lives easier. Mm. So when you are intentional about helping those ancestors, re re reconnecting to those ancestors, then you're literally tapping into a, a energy stream that is more powerful than, than any form of energy that we know about in this society. That's the simple explanation of what we are doing in real time. Speechless. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm trying to. I, I can't. I, I don't want to hold back. I, I gotta hold back tears. <laughs> well, you can cry if you want. Your tears are good. I mean, it's it's um it's uh libations, the form of libations. Yes, but you know this is this is what we need. We are all. Everyone is so scattered around the world, and this is what we need. This brings us back to who we are. This is how we get through. You know all the stuff that's going on. Yeah, God, that's just like, yeah. oh, my God, that's just like, a, um, <laughs> you know, it's not yeah. a, it's a whole community that we're restoring. Well, let, let oh, me say God. this, too, to that point in that um, this everybody is duly stressed because of, you know, almost two years of COVID. And now we've got the Omicron variant and there will be other variants. So we're not going to get over this anytime soon. And. You know, we've got all kinds of madness going on politically, economically, socially, white folk killing black folk. And sometimes they're going to jail and sometimes they're not going to jail. So all of this stuff is in the air. All of this anguish is in the air. All of this fear and anger is in the air. And we've got to walk through this environment, which means that we're internalizing all of these energies. So this time frame right now, the time that we're in right now, in the month of December is the ideal time when our ancestors understood that this is the best time for us to center ourselves to the forces in the universe, to Ma'at, to Heru, to, uh, to Newt, to all of these energies that have always been here, but certain times of the year are more, are, we're more ex uh, accessible uh, to these energies. So this season, this holy day season, as we move towards the, the um, solstice, the winter solstice, is a time frame when we should be stilling our minds, we should be slowing down, we should be intentional about our actions, we should be communing with, with our ancestors, we should be getting closer to those family members who mean the world to us and letting them know that, and disconnecting from all these things which move us away from our humanity. So now is the ideal time. This is the season to be intentional about reconnecting with those ancestors who are always here and waiting for us to come back to our right senses so that they can empower us and we can do the work that we were born to do. So, you know, it, it's about being aware and it's about acting on that awareness so that we can enhance the things that we are, you know, we're currently doing. Absolutely. Um, yes. Yes. Tapping into into that ancestral highway. 
mm-hmm. in our, our cosmic, um, you know, our um, our job, our cosmic job that we've been assigned to do. Yes. Um, before we move move on, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to Alexandra Fiera uh, for her Cash App love, and um, and Dwayne T. Thank you, um, and also family. Hoppy is a, we're not a non-for-profit. And I have to tell you one more thing about Tony's non-for-profit is that, you know, you get a statement at the end of the year. So that you just take it to your little tax person and it's, everything is legit. So please make sure that you guys are um, taking advantage of the tax codes and contributing to non to this particular non-for-profit. Um, it goes a long way. And I, I just want to thank everybody for um, any contributions um, to Hoppy. We keep all of our dollars inside um, in, inside the family. And if you come see Hoppy, you'll see we have uh, one of our producers and the um, CEO of First Independence Bank talking about the black dollar and how it stays mm-hmm. in the community for six hours. <laughs> so this is, yeah, so we, we got work to do here. But um, please feel free to go to um, Hoppy Cash, uh, our cash app right there which is um, dollar sign happy film. And it helps to, you know, it helps us to be able to do all the things, you know, just like uh, Mr. Broder said, none of this stuff is free. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. What you guys are looking at costs money and, you know, we get graphics made and we get all types of things made just so that we can bring this information to you all. And so it's really important that, um, that you support, you know, when you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So uh, let's move on to, Sunday. So Sunday, Mr. Browder will be in uh, Washington. Well, he actually lives there. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll be, Hoppy will be coming to Washington, D.C. And um, we will uh, be hosting a screening of the film, followed by a robust lecture, enlightening, exciting lecture by Mr. Browder. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about What's going to be going on there, Mr. Browder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so as I said, I, I really want to stress drive home um, issues of why Kimmet should matter to us. As I mentioned earlier, everybody is there. Uh, Kimmet represents the oldest documented civilization to mankind. And while there's a small segment of our community that um, are, are in love with Kimmet, and, and appreciate comedic history and culture, the vast majority of our folk, um, their perception of Egypt has been tainted by the Bible or mm. their perception of Egypt has been tainted by uh, textbooks that distort the history and the culture and the people of Kemet. Their perception of Egypt has been uh, distorted by uh, movies by you know, National Geographic and, and television documentaries, which continue to insult us every time they refer to the 25th dynasty as the black pharaohs. So we have to know how we're being played. We have to know and understand uh, the lies and the miseducation, which has been continually at work so that we can intelligently uh, decide who to listen to and who not to listen to, a cultivated, cultivate the good sense to know what not to believe. And, and then more importantly, not engage in arguments with people that are not prepared to receive this information. You know, information is not for everybody. Certain information is not for everyone. And so it's important that you know who you're talking to and the quality of conversation you should have with that person. So on Sunday evening, I want to go through 13 points that we need to be aware of that will help us better understand what Kemet means to us so that we can strengthen our relationship with these ancestors who built the the longest existing civilization known to mankind, the the oldest documented civilization to, Mm -hmm. to mankind, and the civilization which everybody wants to be a part of but don't want to acknowledge that it's African. So it's only when we reshift our orientation to Africa and embrace Africa as ours that we then can reclaim this 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 cultural legacy and then model for others particularly our children that this is your legacy too you're not separated from this this is your legacy too 
And, and so from a, from a spiritual dimension, if this, these temples and monuments and tombs were built by Africans in order for them to be remembered, in order for this culture uh, to be sustained over time, then those ancestors are waiting in the ancestor realm for hundreds of thousands of people to return to their right minds so that they can now work through you. They can inspire you and have you continue their work. So these ancestors are just waiting, but Negroes are hanging out at the club. You know, Negroes oh. are too busy watching football game and basketball game and doing other things rather than knowing that we have an opportunity to tap into our historical and cultural memory, just as every other ethnic group which has a sense of power, personal power, financial power, cultural power in this country uses. They remain connected to their ancestors, right? And so we have to create a, a movement, if you will, where we popularize Kemet, not Egypt, but Kemet. We have to be able to understand the distinction between Kemet and Egypt. And we have to be able to speak intelligently about what this ancient civilization means to us as people of African ancestry and what it also means to the world. Uh, I'll share this with you. One of the pieces that I'm going to talk about is, uh, let me get this angle here. Uh, yeah, this is the November issue of National Geographic. Okay. All right. November issue of National Geographic. And the cover, uh, cover article is 100 Wonders of the Ancient World. And it features this, this really nice uh, painting uh, of the 100 Wonders of the Ancient World. I'll have a slide of this on Sunday, but this cover is a fold out. Ooh, it's a trifold, all right? It's a trifold. And so it focuses on the 100 Wonders of the World and what I want to, what I am going to focus on with regards to this artwork is the central image on this cover of National Geographic is uh, the King Taharka, right here is Taharka. Behind Taharka is Tanakaman, and then behind Taharka uh, is an Omek head here. So. The person who painted this cover, um, um, if you subscribe to National Geographic, they have um, some digital content that's available to subscribers. And they showed a short video of um, Kadir Nelson, the oh, African-American artist who painted this. And so he starts this interview by saying, well, you know, I have a great appreciation for ancient Egypt. So I decided to put Taharka in the center. Wow. And I put the sun above Taharka's head, right? So here's a brother who was steeped in his culture and given the opportunity uh, by National Geographic to design a cover for them, National Geographic, which continually refers to Taharka and other uh, kings of the 25th dynasty as the Negro pharaohs. This brother, because of his cultural consciousness, puts the Negro Pharaoh front and center on the cover of this article. And he connects him to another African ancestor, Tanaka Tan, Tanaka Men, Tanaka Tan. And then next to that is the Omek head. So if you know anything at all about African history, Nile Valley history, if you're familiar with the works of Ivan Van Sertima in his book, They Came Before Columbus, Van Sertima said that it was Africans from the Nile Valley who came to the Americas and influenced the indigenous, indigenous population here. So this brother obviously is aware of that information and he lined, he lined those three figures up wow. on the cover of uh, National Geographic magazine. Now, I don't know if they were fully aware of what he was doing and if so, he may not be back. <laughs> he may not do any more covers, but he left that as a jewel for us. And he also left that as a teaching point for us. When you know your history and culture and you have an opportunity to showcase it, you showcase it front and center. Yes, 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 yes. You know, um, 
Yeah, I'm very familiar. Um, I mean, I don't know K Kadir, but I just know that um, he was born in 1974. And it's something about, and I've seen him in a lot of different interviews. And I'm always like, all his things are always so, you're just like, wow. You And you can't just look at it and say, oh, that's this. You have to really dissect it. So, mm -hmm. wow, okay, i got to make sure I, I check that out. You know, um, I wanted to ask you, because you are on a crusade to make sure that we tap into our ancestral strength. When when did you first realize that A, that there was ancestral strength, but like like when did you like really start to understand this power and started to, to command it? You, you, you know what I'm saying? Like how did you, when did that happen? Well, um, I can't, I don't necessarily remember the year but I remember the occasion. It was my 13th trip to, to Egypt, right? And, you know, for the first 12 times I've been going to Egypt, like most folk, I'm just tripping. I'm glad to be in Egypt and reclaiming the land of our ancestors. And the spirit of Imhotep is going to come down to me and show me where his tomb is buried. And we're going to find this. We're going to find that. I had to get over myself. It took me 13 trips <laughs> to get over myself. And I recall standing in the hyperstar hall of Karnak Temple mm -hmm. and allowing myself to imagine what it was like when this temple was brand new. Imagine mm -hmm. what it was like when the priests and priestesses were moving through this temple uh, during the uh, a pet festival or, or during the uh, winter solstice activities. Um, and it dawned on me then that we, while we think we're all that, we are nothing, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And I and I say that I say that you know humbly, uh, we can't touch what these African ancestors did uh, twenty five hundred years ago or five thousand years ago, that. We are, we are operating on a subhuman level and we think we got it going on. We don't have the faintest idea of what it means to be human. Because if we did, we would be recreating these things that our ancestors made thousands of years ago and we have forgotten what to do. So part of our mission is to remember, to, to, to wake up and commit ourselves to being the vessels through which this work can continue. So I guess it was it was that spirit, it was that consciousness that led me to um, meeting uh, Alina Pistakova and initiating the Ace of Restoration Project 13 years ago. And it's through that work that I've come to understand um, my true purpose in life. I mean, this is, as someone mentioned um, in the uh, in the chat, this is the work that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm convinced of that, uh, that I, I am here, I, I've come back to, to excavate these tombs, or as Charles Finch says, you know, I've come back to, to excavate and restore my own tomb, you know, so maybe that's why you know, I have some familiarity with this space. And um, I, can, you know, I can get to that, you know, I, I can truly get to that. And if we understand, you know, the essence of comedic culture, it's not that these Africans had a preoccupation with death. They had a profound, understanding of the ubiquitous nature of life, that life is eternal, life never ends. And so they understood how to remain connected with those ancestors. And they also understood how to regulate your spirit so that you can fulfill the reasons you were born in the first place. Everybody comes here with a purpose. So living in America, America thrives off of separating us from knowledge of self and the fulfillment of our purpose. So as long as we remain out of sync with our natural spirit, our natural essence, we will never do the things that we have the capacity to do. And we will be unwilling uh, victims in undermining our own lives. So it's, I see it as a, as a serious uh, endeavor, a serious undertaking. And when you can begin to look at 
history and culture, when you can begin to look at Nile Valley civilization from that perspective, it changes everything that you, everything that you knew, knew about who we are, and what we are, we are and what we are. Uh, we're getting some feedback. Uh, feedback. No, I haven't. I haven't changed anything. Yeah, I'm not sure where that's coming from, but anyway, oh, yeah. oh, it yeah. sounds better now. Yeah. So you know, you you mentioned something uh, a couple of times. You said 13 years ago, you're going to tell us 13 things. What is the significance about 13? Uh, well, if um, if you read um, my first book, The Browder File, I talked about uh, survival. Well, I talked about um, Transition 13, right? And Transition 13, 13 is a number that has um, spiritual significance in that um, 12 is a number that represents completion, 12 months in a year, uh, 12 people in the jury, uh, 12 astrological signs, uh, Jesus had 12 disciples and 13, the number 13 represents the energy moving from that completed, that cycle of completion into a higher spiritual state, the transformation of the energy from one level into the next level. Uh, it's also related to the uh, one of the stories about the murder and dismemberment of Asar. Asar's body was cut into 14 pieces, according to Plutarch and scattered throughout Kemet, a set found 13 of the 14 pieces of Asar's body. So uh, 13 symbolizes the, 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 13 symbolizes what I refer to as the Aset principle. And that is remembering the fragmented pieces of our past, of our history and our culture, putting it back together like a set reassembled the body of Asar so that we can be whole. And then she added that 14th piece, which made it possible for Asar to be born again in the next life as Heru. So in that basic story, we have a story that speaks of death and resurrection and what um, the Eastern world refers to as reincarnation. Heru was the reincarnation of his father, Asar. So uh, our African ancestors in the Nile Valley understood that there is no death. There is only the Rahimi Misu, the repetition of the birth. We come back, and we've always come back. And so the key is to come back with a memory of who you were in previous lifetimes so that you can access the knowledge gained from those previous lifetimes and you can move through this lifetime with greater ease. You can be what some people refer to as a genius. And a genius, you know, the word genius is derived from the Arabic word uh, for a jinn. And a jinn or a genie is that 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 energy that that answers all of your wishes. That jinn speaks to your genes that you carry inside of you. That's a reference to your ancestors, who are the ones who will fulfill all your wishes when you understand who they are and how to communicate with them, so that they can express themselves through you. And each and every one of us are carrying the genes of all of our of all of our ancestors going back at least two hundred and fifty thousand years. Wow, wow, wow! You just have to quiet your mind so that you can get Absolutely. tapped in. Yep, and this is the season to be quiet and to be still. Oh, wow! Okay, um, yeah. Okay, so listen, if you guys are in the DC area, you might want to come by. Even if you're not in the DC area, drive up and see um, and, and be able to hear this firsthand, the 13 reasons why now Valley civilization is important to people of African ancestry. It is super important that, um, that, you, that you hear this lecture. This is going to be, this is going to be great. Um, so, um, all right, before I just take a little commercial break, before we move on, you guys make sure you like and share this video. Please like and share this video. I've put in the chat um, the link for, um, if you wanna sign up, um, the Eventbrite link to sign up for um, uh, Professor Browder's um, event that he's gonna have on Wednesday, where he's going to 
uh, talk more in detail and show pictures of what the uh, amazing things she's doing in Kemet. So please make sure you guys sign up for that. Most everyone on there is like, I'm already signed up, I'm signed up. So that's good. Everyone should be signed up, ready to go. Um, if you have not uh, signed up for our newsletter, make sure that you do that. Go to happyfilm.com. If you want to contribute, there's lots of things you can contrib contribute to. You can contribute to uh, Professor Browder's um, IKG, and let me put that up here again, um, his uh, organization, his non-for-profit that is funding all the amazing things happening in Egypt. And also you can uh, support us by going to the cash app at dollar sign happy film and making sure that, um, that you are contributing and just giving thanks to all the information that you're getting because my mind is blown. And it's so interesting, you know, every time I sit and I talk to Mr. Brown, even though I've heard some of these things, but you just sometimes say it like in a little different way. And I'm like, oh, okay. Especially the whole cultural city. Now I'm not thinking singular, I'm thinking plural, like lots of, you know, of us doing, um, you know, us doing major work, major work. Mm -hmm. Right there, IKG, and you can um, please donate and, and make sure that you are contributing to bring back the community of our ancestors. That's what's up. All right, family. So we are um, headed to, we are taking a pilgrimage along with IKG Cultural Resource. We are sponsoring this uh, huge, epic event. It's called One Africa, Returning to the Source Conference and Study Tour. And this is happening in February. Right there, I'll put this up. Um, and in, in part of this, we will uh, be hosting a two-day conference in Aswan, Egypt. And this is going to be, uh, this morning we had a call with all the, all the presenters. And I was just like, oh my God, this is not, and that's another time my eyes was welled up. I was like, oh no, I was like, I can't, I was like, I don't want to cry, but it was just so beautiful to see all you guys um, in one spot finally. And, uh, and here, family right there, those are all, those would be all the presenters that will be at the two-day conference. And then um, Professor Broder, can you just, you know, talk to us a little bit about your involvement, what people can expect, all that good stuff. Sure, sure, sure. Well, you know, this event in February grew out of a conversation that Taki and I had several months ago. And I share with him that uh, what really put me on this path, well, one of the things that put me on this path was my attending the Nile Valley Conference in um, Atlanta, Georgia at Morehouse College in 1984, September of 1984. I had a chance to reconnect with Van Sertema, reconnect with Dr. Hilliard. I met, um, met um, Charles French for the first time, met Naeem Akbar for the first time, met a host of scholars uh, who talked about aspects of, of ancient Kemetic history and culture and philosophy and science and mathematics, uh, you name it. It was just mind blowing. And I said to myself, sitting in the in, in the audience, that that's what I wanted to do. Ooh. You know, that's what I wanted to do. And um, I also, you know, was so taken by the people, the scholars that I saw there. I said, I need to find a way to bring them to Washington D.C. And and that process began in 1987. Three years later, when I started my Free Your Mind lecture series. And I wound up speaking, I wound up bringing to Washington over the course of five years, uh, every other month, every month we would have a lecture series where I brought in practically all of these scholars to Washington, D.C. and was able to cultivate relationships with them and, and learn at the feet of these brilliant men and women. And so I, I was talking to Haki about uh, why this was so significant. And, um, you know, in 2011, I believe it was, uh, Charles Finch and uh, Asa's eldest daughter, Roby, organized a Nile Valley Two conference. Uh, it was held in Atlanta. It was a much smaller conference, but it's so important that, um, that these activities are so important because um, it allows us to bring together scholars who don't interact with each other as a group very often uh, and to showcase our knowledge to a larger collective. 
And and so, you know, Taki and I just kicked this idea around several times. And then he started pulling together the events for the conference. So what that really did for me was to show the value of having conversations with young folk who will take you at your word and act on what you're doing. They won't just sit back and listen, but they act. And at this point in, in our lives, as we are ascending into eldership, that's what we're looking for, young folk who are willing to do the work, right? Uh, who you can consult with. They have the energy, they've got the time, they can do the work and we can sit back and, and, and provide wise counsel. So, you know, I'm so proud to see what, what you and Taki and the um, uh, Aket family have pulled together. And so what we'll be witnessing on the um, 25th and 26th of February next year is history being made again. Um, you know, we've got, you know, Professor Small, we've got Leonard and Rosalind Jeffries, we've got uh, Wade and Vera Nobles, you know, we, we've got We've got Teofilo Binga, right? We've got the creme de la creme of African scholars. And, and, and the reality is 10 years from now, many of these people will be gone. They will become ancestors, but we would have had an opportunity to hear them, to interact with them, to yeah. learn from them such that their spirit will always live in us. See, that's the role we're playing. We are the, the walking, the living, breathing, walking, talking repository of all of these ancestors. So if they mean so much to you, we need to study them. We need to understand what motivated them and then find ways that we can plug into and continue the work that they're doing because we are all part of a continuum and everybody has a role to play. Yes. And, you know, if you're serious about this process, uh, because it, it is no joke and it's nothing to play with. But if you're serious about this process, you know, the ancestors will work with you, they'll guide you, they'll protect you, and they will connect you with other people who ancestors are also working through so that collectively you can make some powerful things happen. And that's what this process is all about. That is why we're here. Yes. You know, one thing that, I, that keeps every time I talk to you, it's not even about talking, it's about action. You're always talking about this is what we're going to do. Absolutely. Because a lot of times people spend a lot of lip service talking about, you know, especially, you know, listen, I love the conscious community. Okay. <laughs> but we spend a lot of time talking about a lot of different things. And that's cool, but it has to be rooted in straight up action. Well, okay? look, talk action. is cheap. Anybody can talk. Yes. Anybody can talk. It's what you do that really matters. Yes. And most people spend too much time talking and too little time doing. So I, I kind of back away from people who talk a lot because mm. people who talk a lot don't really do a lot. And I prefer, <laughs> I prefer to watch what people are doing and I can learn more from watching what they are doing sometimes than listening to what they say. Because the real language, the real power is in what they are doing. Yeah. It's the action of it's the action of creating because you know the essence of it is, you know, we are we are here on this earth as miniature gods if you will, if I can use that word, miniature gods. We are not god, but the essence of the creator resides in us, which means that we have the capacity to become creators, to create. So the question then becomes, what are you going to create? You're going to create happiness in your household and community, or you're going to create hell in your household and community. The ability to do either is within you. So what are you focusing your energies on? Who are you associating with? So these associations and this focus will determine ultimately everything that you are doing. So it's about, you know, creating sacred spaces such as this. This happy talk is a sacred space where we can come together and talk about issues that are important to us. And, you know, I was judging from a couple of things in the chat about, well, every time we start getting serious, you know, the other folk will try to mess up the, the audio. They're going to do what they know to do, right? Uh, and we should anticipate that. But we have the power to neutralize whatever it is that they're doing so that we can do our work. You, you notice whatever it was, it stopped, right? <clears throat> well, 
<laughs> it's closed. That's my case. <laughs> the powers that protect us and guide us are stronger than the powers that are trying Absolutely. to destroy us. Absolutely. And we can never forget that. Yes, we, we have to believe that. in it. Like we have to believe in that. Well, That's how we become stronger. Well, let, let me let me correct you, my sister. Okay. Uh, we don't believe it because the belief is something except without proof. We know it. We and know we act it. on the knowing. Yes. We act on the knowledge. Yes. Yes. Knowledge cancels yes. our belief. Yes. Okay, I like that. Man. Okay. Okay. I'm not even a host because I spent too much time being quiet. <laughs> like I gotta <laughs> take in what you're saying. You're right. Absolutely. Wow. Um, God, you got me discombobulated now. That's okay. Right. Take a breath. Um, Take a breath. So, so because we are going to have this monumentous pilgrimage to, um, and we have a lot of people coming to, uh, to, uh, to Kemet in February, and you can still be a part of it. Um, if you are, you know, interested in, in coming right there, you can go to aquettours.com. You know, uh, put in your registration and your uh, paperwork and put down your deposit. We are leaving. Um, this trip will be leaving on February 20th through the 28th. But two days, all the we have three, uh, like three groups of people. And we will all be culminating together in Aswan for two days, the 25th and the 26th of February for a two day conference. Now, this event will be streamed, so if you cannot get there, although I think you should, if you can get there, make it happen. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, if you, if, if in your wildest dreams, you want to go, you need to start aligning your mind and your body and making it happen, okay? Because you are not going to want to miss this. And also, with this two-day conference and these 11 presenters, uh, scholars, historians that we're going to have on the panel, we are... Um, creating a commemorative book okay and every participant that comes will get this book we will also at a later date sell sell this book but this is a worldwide event okay and so we are giving everyone that's listening to us right now the opportunity to have a piece of like be part of history mm -hmm. okay so at any point at any price point you can get in on the action okay so if you have a business card, you know, because we have lots of, you know, well, not a lot of space. Now, it's not going to be a book of business cards, okay? We have, um, and before I can tell you how you can get in, let me tell you what's going to be in the book. So beautiful pictures, of course. But each of the presenters are um, will have a essay of, of sorts, of abstract essay of what they will be talking about at the, um, at the conference that will be part of the book. Their bio and um, pictures of them will be in there. And other pieces that we're not ready to yet discuss yet, but they're gonna be in this book. And so if you want to, if you're a small business or even if you're a large business, um, if you wanna you know, put in, uh, you know, get ad space, you will be able to do that. This is what you have to do. Let me put up our, um, our website again, because everything's at happyfilm.com. <laughs> um, and you can actually shoot us an email which would be better. I'm sorry. Let me do that. Um, where you can uh, find out about pricing. So you will be able to submit your business card, a quarter page ad, a half um, page ad, a whole page. You can get on the inside cover. You can be on the back side of the cover, inside the back side cover. We have options for you. But also, if you're like, you know, that's fine, that's cute, I can do that, but you want to do more, you can also. Um, be part of um, because we are going to be streaming this the conference piece we're going to stream it and we're also going to be making a film about the whole entire um, event that's happening you can um, you know become a corporate I don't, I don't know if we're corporate but you can become a major sponsor okay which will include your branding which will be part of a animated loop that we'll have that'll be planned at the conference you know, before when people are being seated during lunchtime, all throughout the conference, we'll have this this loop of um, different logos and all types of stuff planned. You can be part of that. You can also have your images be part of um, our film that we will uh, be releasing about the whole event. That's going to be monumental. And um, you'll be on our website. Your information will be on our website. So at any point, wherever you are in this, 
you can get in on the action. So if you just send us an email and we'll be sending out, and see, this is why you need to be part of the newsletter, be signed up, because we're gonna send out um, you know, more information about this and the application, this, this, and that. But tonight we just want to, I want to make sure that you guys understood, you know, after seeing everyone this morning um, on this call, um, the seriousness, the, uh, the amount of energy that was on that Zoom call, this is gonna be wonderful. So if you want to be part of history, Okay, I'm just going to put it out there. You definitely want to be part of history. You can go ahead and shoot us an email at happyfilm.com. Uh, I'm sorry, happyfilm at gmail.com. That's why I had to put it up here um, so that, uh, you know, we can send you more information and you can make sure you get your business because that's really, you know, what Happy's about, this cooperative economics, us working together. And this is yet another way. So all black businesses, come on, let's get this in. Let's make this happen. Um, and be part of history. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, Professor Browder, do you have anything else you want to add to what's <laughs> happening? Well, uh, I, I saw in the chat someone was asking a question about the COVID status of the gathering. Um, yeah. The gathering this Sunday and um, in Egypt in February. So, um, you know, uh, DC has been pretty strict with regards to uh, following COVID protocols. Uh, the mayor uh, last week had finally ended the mask mandate and said that businesses can require masks if they wish, but it wasn't mandatory. But now with the presence of the Omicron um, variant, uh, those mask mandates are coming back. So I, I, can, I can assume that there will be social distancing uh, Sunday in the theater, people should be wearing their masks and just exercise um, good good common sense. You know, exercise good common sense uh, with regards to uh, February in Egypt. I'll actually be going to Egypt in a couple of weeks on the uh, 16th. I'm taking a, a group over. This would be my fourth trip to Egypt since June. And so Egypt is taking COVID seriously. They limit the number of people who can uh, ride on the bus in order to minimize the spread of, of, of the virus. They, uh, at least when we did our tours, they were taking the temperature when you got on the bus, you had to wear a mask. And uh, they, are, they are following the protocols uh, because tourism is the engine which drives the Egyptian economy. Um, they lost last year because of COVID which cut down on the number of tourists traveling in Egypt, they lost the equivalent of um, $1 billion a month wow. in, in tourist related revenue. Um, and so I was just there uh, a month ago and tourism is back. Uh, a colleague of mine, Egyptian colleague of mine just sent me uh, some pictures last week of folk at the pyramids uh, at Upper Giza. And I've never seen it so crowded in my life. So wow. folks are back in mass. People are ready to travel. And Egypt is one of the number one destination points uh, in the world. People yeah. are coming from all over the world. And, and so I would imagine that uh, there will be COVID protocols in place. You do not have to be vaccinated to come to Egypt, but you are required to show negative PCR results before you board a plane to leave America for Egypt. You have to show that same documentation uh, as soon as you leave the plane before you can enter the airport in Cairo. And then returning back to the States, um, Biden yesterday formalized the announcement, but every US citizen um, returning to the United States from abroad has to have a negative PCR result 24 hours prior to your departure, as opposed to 72 hours, uh, which is what it has been. So what that does is it's gonna put more pressure on uh, Egyptian officials to make sure that they can handle um, this, this rush to process the PCR test. But if they want tourists to come there, they need to make sure that they can process uh, yeah. the PCR results. So I'm sure that will be in place. And, and, and basically, uh, as Taki mentioned in the call today, He'll be doing what what everyone else is doing uh, with the tours. Um, they'll have the the doctors come to the hotel where the group is staying. Yeah. 
to to do the swabs and they'll process the results and then um, more than likely they'll email the results to your agent so by the time you get to cairo to board that international flight you'll have that documentation and you can get on the plane and go yeah yeah that's it yeah you know i was just in um in dakar a couple weeks ago well like no, like two months ago and they just come to your hotel and then they send you the results of whatsapp i mean it was like it's seamless i was like wow this is great <laughs> so yeah yeah so it's important so we can't let COVID stop us from traveling Not and being part of this event that's going to be happening in february and like i say if you can make it happen make it happen you will be um you you'd be so happy you know about it trust me it's gonna be great as, um, as Felicia would say that's what's up yeah that's what's up <laughs> that's what's i know up. i know i've been you know i've been really trying to change my lexicon because especially when i'm around you because i usually keep saying beautiful Oh man, that's what's up. You know, because that's that's how processing the information. And sometimes I just don't have any other words other than that's beautiful. Just like this morning, I was like, wow, this is beautiful. I was like, okay, let me just try and process it. And I'm gonna look up some other words, you know, try mm -hmm. to figure out something else over here. But um, yes, family, if you want to go right there, I can tours. Um, and again, um, the the uh, someone was asking for the link. The link again is in um, the chat for anyone that's want, that wants to sign up for uh, Mr. Browder's event that he's having on Wednesday. And family, if you are in the D.C. area, okay, and can make this happen, right here I'm putting in the uh, the link for the event, right? Or you can go to happyfilm.com either way um, and get tapped in to uh, the event that's happening this Sunday at the Miracle Theater. Um, yeah, Mr. Broder, I think I think that's it. Okay. I Good job, good. Felicia. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> good job. Yes, I can't wait. I'm glad you, um, this 13, I like that. I, uh, you know, I like concise things that my mind can just go do, do, do. So that's, mm -hmm. this is going to be great. Um, all right, family. So, um, I'm going to just, uh, I'm sorry, before we go, I just have to say next week, I mean, this week we are in D.C. with you, Mr. Browder, and then the following week we will be in Atlanta, which is December 11th, okay? Dr. Chika Akua will be hosting the panel, and on the panel we have Taiki, we have Blue Pill, we have Sharp Bates uh, from Alter Candy, and we also have Dr. Um, Alicia Watkins, and we will have a special presentation by uh, Dr. David Anderson, which is going to be like, I've been talking to him over the last couple of weeks and each time he's like, well, I'm going to add this in. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, and, David is off the chain. David is off the chain. So, yes, <laughs> it's yeah, going to be he exciting. Has a, he has lots of spirit, lots of energy. And so I was like, okay, look, we got this amount of time, brother. But yeah, he's going to definitely put some stuff um, together for us. So that should be, um, that should be a lot of fun. And we're going to be at the epicenter and then Atlanta, uh, excuse me, Houston, January 9th. Um, we will be there with Asar Imhotep, who was also in the film and, uh, Dr. Wade Nobles. And that's, that's going to be great as well. And that's happening mm -hmm. January 9th in Houston. Okay. Mr. Brown. Well, thank you so much. And, no um, I'm going to see you in a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. You've been working hard, so get some rest, Felicia. we got uh, a lot of work to do this weekend, a lot of minds to liberate. And um, yeah, it's going to yeah. be, uh, be wonderful. The weekend is going to be sunshine, no rain. Uh, temperatures are going to be in the low 50s. So great time to be out, get some fresh air, get some vitamin D. And, you know, we haven't had, uh, here in D.C., we haven't had very many opportunities for the community to get together. You know, mm. our space uh, at the IKG Cultural Resource Center, um, our space in Thurgood Marshall Center has been closed since um, March of last year. So everything that we've been doing has been virtual. Uh, so it will be good <laughs> to be um, with an audience of, of, of people, to feel the energy from people. Zoom is nice, but there's nothing like the real thing. Absolutely. So I look forward to uh, Sunday and I'm sure everyone will will leave inspired and better prepared to do the work that they were born here to do. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Okay. All right. We are we are ready, Mr. Browder. I will see you in a little while. And family, um, you know, make sure you sign up for. Um, I think everyone in this chat has already signed up, quite honestly, because everyone should be on your mailing list. And that's the other thing. If you're not on Mr. Browder's mailing list, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Make sure you get on his mailing list. Make sure you get on our mailing list so that you stay connected. Um, you know, to everything. That's mm -hmm. really super important. All right. Thank you, Mr. Browder. All right. Take care. Good night. And I'll see you um, shortly. You'll see me shortly. All right. Okay. Tell Lance right. what's up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Right. Take Peace. care, everybody. Good night. All right. There you go. That was Mr. Browder. Make sure, family, that you um, are signed up to his um, event on Wednesday. That's going to be great. And so um, if you, like I said, again, I hate to keep beating a dead horse. If you're in a DC area, make sure that you are signed. Um, I mean, that you will come through. I have a whole family, um, a brother from Detroit, Dennis, he's bringing him and his uh, four kids down to DC just to be, you know, to, to um, you know, to see and witness this for himself and to show his kids, you know, really what this is about. So he's coming all the way from the D. So if you are even in Connecticut or wherever, West Virginia, Virginia, whatever, please come across the bridge and check out uh, Mr. Browder, um, see Hoppy, and also see Mr. Browder um, at the Miracle Theater at uh, 730 on Sunday. Okay, fam. I think that's it. And so... You know, like I, yes, Mr. Boatwright, Becky from Detroit knows him. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you know, um, I can always, I just love what um, what Professor says, uh, Professor Small says after, you know, anytime you talk to him on the phone, he always kind of says the same thing. So I'm going to borrow this from him, okay, which is peace and blessings. And um, until next time, stay, stay well, family. Oh, wait. I'm, oh, my. I forgot one more important thing, you know, is that our happy talks next week. We are going to um, to have Queen of Four. She's coming on December 9th. So um, please look for information and support her. That's going to be um, huge. We've been trying to get the queen for a minute. Um, and uh it's it's going to be cool. And so far, I want to thank Rashamela. She's already sent in her information to be part of the book, the commemorative book for one Africa returning to the source. So thank you. That's what's up. She's going to get primary primary place now. She's the first person. So thank you, um, Rashamela. Um, and remember, you want to be part of history. You can go to happy. Uh, send us an email at happyfilm at gmail dot com. And uh, we will send you the information so you can get hooked up right away. And um, our city tour, D.C., Atlanta next week, Houston in January. That's it, family. Peace and blessings. I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God? also defines the relationship between economy and God. African-Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?